Most steering wheels are made to be pretty durable, but after some use, it's not unusual to see chips or even what might be wear from the sun and UV rays sitting in the steering wheel. So uh, this WRX here, uh, I've had it for about four years and it's gotten some wear. So if you look here, you'll see that there are, there are some chips in various locations on the steering wheel. Uh, the stitching actually has held up pretty well. And then the biggest issue here with this one is this wear up top. So it's it's basically from the sun, it's the, the leather's kind of gotten uh, worn out and probably from oil, from hands and things like that, it's also gotten some wear. So what we're gonna do here today is we are gonna install a customized cover that's made to be an exact fit for this. So this is different than the covers you might find in an auto parts store for 10 bucks, as it is custom cut to this car and will be stitched on. So we'll, we'll hop over here and explore what we have in the package. So this is our kit for the WRX here. We purchased this from a company called Auto Interior Technic, and they don't have anything to do with this video. Uh, paid about I think 80 bucks for this set shipped. Uh, it took about two and a half weeks to get here and we just purchased it straight out like anybody else and we're gonna try to install it. So let's explore what's in here. So our first piece is some tape. They recommend putting some tape on the steering wheel to hold it in place so it doesn't slip. Our second piece is the thread that's gonna be used for the stitching and some cutters for the thread. We also have what most would call like a spudger tool when working with cell phones and such. And this is gonna be used to tuck the cover under some of the plastic panels for the steering wheel. Our next piece is a set of instructions. And it looks like the instructions basically show how to tie the, the, the thread off and some stitching patterns and some recommendations on how to use it. And it also shows how to use that tool to tuck some pieces in behind it. And of course, our main piece is the actual cover itself. So you can see this is uh, kind of like a micro suede material. Uh, you can see that uh, it has some instructions on the direction where it's supposed to be placed. And then you can see the cutouts for the various plastic areas and covers on there. And this one has a red mark for the 12 o'clock position. So what we'll do now is we'll do a test fit in the car to see just how the cover lines up and then we'll move from there. So before we do anything with the steering wheel or start any process, we'll just do a test fit just to make sure that this matches up well and that it is actually the one that is for our car. So all I'm doing right now is just kind of stretching it over and trying to do a, a general lineup of the cover and as you can see it looks like we have the right one just based on how tightly it fits and based on some of the cutouts so you can see the cutouts like here lining up and the cutouts they're going to go behind our buttons here and then the 12 o'clock position marking and that sticker that we showed you for driver and windshield is going down there under that exact position so since this appears to be correct we're going to pull this off and clean the steering wheel before we proceed with anything else. So we're just gonna start off with some uh, plastic cleaner, uh, basically just to clean all the dirt off the steering wheel. And then after that, we'll do some oil and grease remover because we'll need to clean the surface so that the adhesive will stick. So basically all we're doing here is just a good scrub of everything, just to make sure that we get all, all the dirt out off the surface because we'll have to put some adhesive down and we want that to stick. And as you can see here, even though the steering wheel was cleaned fairly recently, it still picks up a decent amount of stuff once, uh, once we start to clean it. So once, we, once we've done our initial cleaning, we're gonna go over it with an oil and grease remover. So what we're using here is this Gion Prep. Uh, and this is basically like isopropyl alcohol, but that'll remove any kind of grease and oil out of there. So it'll allow our adhesive to stick for one of the next steps. So just like with the previous step, we're just gonna do a lot of wiping to prep this surface so it's ready to accept some adhesive. And you can see there's still 
a little bit of stuff coming off, but that's fine. It's probably some of the dyes and the leather, leather and stuff like that, that, that might be coming off, but the surface should not feel oily at all once we've finished this process. And what we want to do is we want to pay attention to kind of the areas behind here and behind here, because as you'll find out in further steps, that's actually where we're going to put our adhesive is on the back side of the wheel. So we want to make sure that those have absolutely no grease or oil on them so that our adhesive will stick. And then we'll just do another final round and then we'll leave this for a minute or two just so all the alcohol and whatever's on the surface can evaporate. So once the degreaser and oil and grease remover has evaporated, uh, if you have any kind of loose pieces, you want to remove that. And then you'll feel to the touch that the surface isn't really you know, oily or greasy anymore. So our next step is we're going to put some adhesive on. So some people say that this adhesive is optional. And I think that with the tight, how tight the stream wheel is, it could maybe do without it, but just for extra assurance, we're gonna put this on. And instead of putting it on on any visible surfaces, we're gonna put it on the back of the wheel, just because although this is pretty thick, this still may show through, and we don't want little rectangles showing through once we've installed this. So all we're really doing here is just taking some adhesive and we are just kind of installing it in various locations around the wheel just to be able to kind of anchor uh, anchor, anchor the uh, cover in place so it doesn't move once it's installed. And the reason I recommended cleaning the areas back here earlier is that is those are kind of what we can use as our big spots to kind of anchor it, you know, and, and four or five major places so that we know that it's not going to move. And there's plenty of this. You could really almost cover the entire wheel if you wanted to, but I don't think that's, that's going to be necessary here. We're just kind of gonna try to cover the major areas so we can keep uh, keep this in place. And as you can see, because we cleaned it well, the adhesive is sticking properly. And if you look behind here, you'll notice what it looks like once it's installed. And all we're gonna do now is just pull the contact paper off to prep it for the next step. So once we have our adhesive prep back here, we can go ahead and get our cover ready. And as you remember, there was an identifier. So we'll use that as a reference and then we'll pull it off because we don't want that, even though it's really skinny, we don't really want that inside our wheel because it really is a one-time use item. And we'll use the center point of the wheel as a reference point because we want to try to get it as close as possible this time since we have the adhesive behind the wheel to not have to reposition it and loosen that adhesive. move the wheel, adjust it to make it easier. But you can see here, we're pretty close. We still need to shift ours a little bit to the right. So what we'll need to do is just loosen and move and kind of use the center line to, to match it up and see how close or how far you are from your point. And you can also see, you know, on some of the trim pieces, if they're, if they're missing, missing their alignment, then you know that you need to move it. Okay. 
now we're starting to get pretty close to our trim here. That looks like we may just need to move it slightly to the left. And now if you look at this, see our trim lines up pretty well there. Uh, if we look over here, we're lined up pretty well to the edges. And if we look over here, we're also lined up pretty well to the edges. And you'll also be able to tell because of how these come together and where they get stitched in. So now that we kind of have the cover where we want, we can press down so it catches some of that adhesive we put down and that'll help it so it doesn't slip and slide. Our next step will be looking at these instructions for recommendations on what what the ways to stitch and you and the ways to knot it so you see you know they uh recommend making you know a knot to start it and then uh uh making a, a starting point here to go have the knot under the wrap and then go across it and then basically says to repeat that and, and then just go across and most uh and they say after the kink is made uh, you can use a lighter to burn the edge of it to make it solid. And uh, they also recommend possibly turning the steering wheel if you need to, to make it easier. And they also say that you don't have to go across every stitch, although they recommend starting like that. But basically you want to do like the first five or six across directly. And then after that, you can skip until you get close to the edge and then do the last five or six across like that. So what we're going to do here next is we're going to measure out some thread tie it off and then we'll, we'll get this started that we have all of this ready we can measure out our thread and the rule of thumb usually for this and there's a fairly decent amount of thread here included is to go about three or maybe four times the length of the area you're trying to cover so we're going to do one and two and hold that there and then go again that will give us three and we'll go a little more and that'll give us four and we kind of stretch that out and that'll basically cover our area and we'll twist it off and we'll use the included cutter to give it a snip now once we've snipped it we can take one of the two included needles that were given to us in the kit and what we'll do is we'll thread it through Snip that off. All right, so now we're going to thread it through. And once it's through, we'll start to tie a couple of knots. We'll do double knot here just to make sure that it doesn't come out and actually we'll do one more just for extra safety and there it is and then per the instructions they recommend is to get the uh, get the needle after a kink is made use lighter to slightly burn the end to make it solid. So what we'll do is we'll shorten this here and then we have a lighter and we'll just, we'll just let it melt into place there. So that way it won't unravel. And we'll just clean that off and that should do the trick there to allow us to make that stick inside.
So once we have our knot here prepped, where it won't come out, and we'll get stuck back here. What we're actually going to do is we're going to start inside the first hole here for the wrap. So all we're going to do is flip this here and find that first hole and kind of get started. So what we're going to do is just we're just going to start here with this first hole. So we're going to flip it over and find where this first hole starts and just push that through. And that should bring our thread out. And that'll basically give us a start right on the edge. And then, which might be kind of hard to see here, we're gonna go and do the same thing on the other side to kind of give it an end point. So what we actually ended up doing here is we turned the steering wheel around. As you know, may see, it's a little more challenging to do it in the car, but we preferred not to remove the steering wheel. So that first one came out of here. And then for the second one, we actually went back here and went in from the outside in. And that'll basically create a little loop here. So all that we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull our thread out and then as you can see here, there is a piece of thread going across. So at this point, we can rotate, uh, rotate our wheel back so we can get into a position to, to, to continue stitching and to bring that tighter. So you can see here, we've pulled this across and now are using the thread to bring the two sides together tight. And as the thread is coming out, we can start you pulling it through through the thread that they've left here so our first first one will go directly into the first thread here and then we will pull it out and from that point forward we will go directly across to the one that's doing the same job directly on the other side So as you can see here, we've grabbed the first thread and then also grabbed the thread directly across from it. So here for the first, I would say six of these stitches, we're gonna go just directly back and forth across and catch every stitch. So as you can see here, it's actually working quite well to bring the stitches together evenly. So you can see here for the first, we've done about three of them, we've grabbed them directly across from each other. And then as we pull them tight, it brings the cover tight. And all we're doing there is we're going from one side to the other. And then once we come across, we go in and we pull the thread through and then just pull it tight and then go across and grab the next one. So what we started stitching earlier, that whole section is stitched up now. And then we got down here. One thing I noticed because we started stitching on this side and pulling it tight, it had kind of pulled everything a little bit to the side. So I ended up using the tool, stuffing the excess material underneath. So it's this type of material here. Basically just take it and start pushing it underneath the panel. Once I pushed it under there, I was able to even this out. And then I just started the same thing on the other side here and I've been stitching up. So here uh, I'm going to continue stitching. So as you can see here, as I stitch, I kind of pull it tight and it just goes, I'm just, I'm doing every single stitch to keep it tight. There's enough thread in the kit from what I can tell. And then just go across from one side to the other, basically just get it underneath the stitches on the wheel and then just pull the thread out to the other side. And then once the thread is pulled, just pull it tight and just kind of keep, keep going every stitch. Just go across to the next one and just follow the same process. So pull it, pull the thread out. Once it's pulled out, just pull it tight. And then I'm just making sure that it stays centered 
with the factory stitching in here. And then I'm gonna get all the way up to the edge of this and then we'll show you guys how to tie off the end. So as you can see, we've rounded the corner here. You just have to continue to keep it tight. And basically all I'm doing here is finishing the last few threads here on this, these flaps. And same process as has happened for the rest is we're just going through the threads over to the other side and just make sure it doesn't get caught like what I just did. And then when it comes across, just pull it tight. And as we get closer here, we are going to finish it off. And here in just a little bit on this other side, we'll go through and tie it off. So as you can see, we're approaching the last thread here on the front. So we're going to continue pulling that out and there'll be a couple of holes on the back. So we just want to pull it tight like we have been. And as you can see, that keeps things nice and tight around the whole edge. And we want to continue to keep it lined up with the buttons here on the back side which is kind of hard to see here, but you can see where we have the threads finishing there. And what we're gonna do is this last hole here, we're gonna come in from this side, pull the thread through, and then tie a knot inside the flap. So as you can see here, we've pulled it through to the last flap and if I pull it over to the other side you'll see now it's tightening up so all that we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our needle and punch it in through here to go through the fabric so it comes out on the other side here and that will allow us to tie a knot there so the thread stays tight So we have this knot formed here and I just spun the thread around and then we're going to keep that loop there and pull our thread right back through and then we're going to tighten everything up and that should create a knot as you see here right up against the back of the fabric and that will prevent it from pulling out so you can see the knot there and what we'll probably do here and just for an extra peace of mind is we'll double knot it. So as you just saw, we tied off that knot. And now before we proceed to kind of the main section, uh, we're gonna tuck some of this in to give it some relief on the other side because we'll have to start the threads down here. So basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna use our tool here and just start pushing it in. And you can kind of hear the plastic popping as it goes back there, but we're going to stuff it in as much as possible, but we are going to leave the bottom down here slightly loose so we can start the threads for the other side.
I'm just gonna use the tool here and you can see the gaps here. So our goal is to basically get this stuffed in here. So you can see I'm stuffing it behind the plastic just to get it stuffed in there so it's tight behind the plastic. So you can see I've kind of started it here. It's a bit of a pain to get started, but once we get started, we should be able to even it out. So you can see there, most of it is behind the plastic now. And we're just gonna kind of push it and bring it down. So this tightens up so it doesn't stay bunched up. We've got our fabric tucked here behind the plastic trim just to give us a little more room to work. So same deal as before, we tie the knot and we're gonna start it from this side. So we're just gonna go over here and find the other side of this hole and start it through. We got the knot on here, we got it through this side and now we're just gonna pull our thread through. And you may notice that we have a whole bunch of length here. And basically, since this is the last section, instead of measuring and trying to guesstimate how much we'll need, we just kind of went ahead and put the remainder of the thread on the needle uh, to get this process started. So it might be a little more tedious, but it gives us a, a bit of a margin of safety. So over here, we're gonna do the same deal that we've done with the other ones, where we'll go on the other side and enter, enter through this, and then we'll start with this, this thread here. Right. So we have these two pieces connected now, and what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at this fabric and make sure that we're centered up. So you're just gonna look at the factory stitching and make sure that these pieces are kind of meeting up at the same point. And this is a little offset here, so it's actually gonna pull in and then we'll stuff the rest of this back in and continue stitching. As you saw in the time lapse, we went across the top and stitched all this here. So now we're reaching the edge here and we use the little spatula the spudger tool here to push this in kind of as far as it would go, but leaving a little spot over here. So we're just continuing our same pattern of threading it in right now until we thread it into the edge. And then here, we're gonna finalize it by tying a knot. So the rest of it has basically been pretty similar where we've gone in and just made sure that all our fabric is tight behind the plastic. Same thing down here where you can see, you know, gone behind these gaps and then the same process on the back side. So here uh, we've kind of started this material here, but left a bit out until we finish stitching it. Once we finish stitching it, we're gonna stuff it in just kind of like we've done up here. Right.
so we got our knot tied off and we're just going to touch it here with the lighter for a bit basically melt the end of the the thread there and now that all of that is in uh, we're going to take our tools here and get this all the way in where it's supposed to go so so we can cover the whole area evenly so as you can see here we're just pushing it in getting the fabric behind the plastic and evening it out so it matches the other side Now, we just have to push the rest of this in. And that is pretty much done. Uh, we might make some small adjustments, but it's all tight everywhere. Thread, we have our line centered up and it feels awesome. Hopefully this helps some others that want to do this mod.